Have any of you ever had that thing where someone gives you an idea and you just get like instant inspiration? Because that's exactly what happened to me when the lovely Max at Lizard of Doom issued a little challenge to me. But rather than pass on what he had to say, I'm just going to let you have it straight from the horse's mouth. So here's a little clip with Max to introduce his February Valentine's Day challenge. Hello, Stu at Tesseract Miniature Studios. Roses are red, violets are blue. I have a kibash challenge for you. This time we shall be depicting unlikely lovers. Two miniatures from different factions in a romantic situation. Keep it family friendly please, I've already had someone in my discord suggest some Gaz girl and Yarrick stuff that lives up here rent free, so keep it nice. The outcome will be a beautiful interaction between these two lovers and it shall include the colour pink in the final uh, paint job. You have until February 4th where there will be three images submitted for voting to my Patreons, and we will have a Valentine's Day victor. Good luck to you, end transmission. To fulfill this design, I have what I think is a pretty good idea. I want a picture of ruined swing park somewhere in the 41st millennium. Let's say Hell's Reach for argument's sake. And in that swing park, I want an unlikely couple to be enjoying an even more unlikely little date. The idea is to have one model pushing another on a swing set, and I already have two models in mind for this. After all, no one likes pushing people around more than Space Marines, so we'll have a Marine for our pusher. And who likes going fast and having the wind in their hair more than the Orcs? So that's a pretty easy pick for the pushy. Is pushy a word? It is now. Now then, I happen to already collect Black Templars, so that's where I got my inspiration for setting the scene in Hell's Reach. And at this stage, the idea kind of feels like it's coming together pretty nicely. The problem is pink. Where do we fit pink into this piece? There isn't a ton of pink in the 41st millennium, and especially not on the loyalist side. Well, luckily, before I even started the rest of the work for this, I'd actually already figured that part out. Because what I'm going to do is use my laser to make an awesome little neon sign, which is going to cast some really nice bright pink light across our entire scene. But look, before we get ahead of ourselves, there is literally a whole ass diorama to build. So let's start at the bottom. Literally. I didn't have any big bases lying around, but it took literally seconds to make one on Tinkercad. So I decided to give myself about 100 millimeters diameter circle to work in. I probably should have gone a touch bigger on this, but I think it's fine. And my 3D printer made short work of whipping this out in about half an hour, and now I have a perfect platform to build on. So to get this base rolling, I started out by covering it in what should probably be an illegal amount of texture paste. And whilst that was still wet, I then grabbed some broken up bits of laser cut MDF scrap from other projects and played around with some layouts for the major parts of the rubble. I will be adding in some other stuff to this too, but for now I just blended these bits in with more texture paste and then decided to crack on with the next part. Because of course, it's important to get that orc done pretty early into proceedings so that I can judge the size and position of the swing set that he's gonna be sat on. When it comes to the bits, this is actually a pretty easy little kit bash because boys generally look so crouched in their sort of battle pose that they're pretty much sat down already. This meant I could basically just use a stock orc boy, give or take a few changes. I did, however, need to choose relatively straight arms to be able to grab onto the ropes of the swing, and this involved the removal of weapons and a bit of drilling out of hands to make space for the ropes to go through. Simple stuff. I also went with this war bike ahead over a standard boy, and honestly, that decision was just because I liked it. 
Also, I'd like to just give a quick shout out to Bugger It in my Discord for sending me the parts for the Orc Boy. Saved me buying them off of eBay, so thank you so much for that. Really do appreciate it. You're a legend. Anyway, other than that, there isn't really a ton to be getting on with for the Orc just yet, so we'll put him aside now and we'll work on the next part. That next part being the swing set. And the majority of the frame is made from this two millimeter aluminium wire. That's aluminum if you're in America. It's nice and easy to bend and cut, but it's rigid enough to hold its shape and form well. It's also quite easy to beat up. You can sort of dent and chip it if you wish to. With the outside frame designed and glued up, I could then move on to the seat and ropes. For the seat, I'm just gluing up some coffee stirrers to form a wooden seat. I did consider making a more modern plastic form fitting seat using putty, but it just wasn't quite the look I wanted. I wanted this to look cobbled together from scrap. The ropes are made with scale barbed wire from the Army Painter, which is in reality just wire with a second smaller wire twisted around it, but it makes good scale rope when painted. To make it look a little bit more rope-like and to make it stronger, I doubled it over, locking the open end into the chuck of my Dremel and then using a paintbrush to anchor the loop end, I twisted it up with the Dremel to make a four-strand twist that was way more rigid. To bring all of this together, I needed to make some connectors and joints using green stuff. Working with dentist tools, a sharp knife and plenty of water made all of this relatively simple, even for me as a pretty novice sculptor. To roll out the green stuff, these plexiglass rolling pins are quite interesting. Not 100% sure whether I'm completely in love with them, but pretty useful tool. Now at this point, we've made some great process, but I did want to just do a little dry fit with the orc just to make sure that everything was coming together properly. In order to do this, I left the seat wires long and that gives me plenty of play in how he's positioned. I can adjust those wires to move him up or down. And so I then progressed immediately to getting our green lad painted. I didn't really go for any particular color scheme here. I just wanted a nice grim dark looking orc boy to fit the smashed up battlefield scene. Once finished up, he was ready to slot in place. But before I could do that, there was just one other little prerequisite to take care of first. And that is, of course, the swing frame. I went for this nice bright yellow color and then dinged and weathered it to all buggery. I tried painting this off the base initially, which I'd been working on off camera, but it turned out to just be way easier to attach it and then paint it. Just goes to show that sub assemblies aren't always the best way. Next, I filled in the first milestone on the progress bar by getting the orc positioned with some glue on the rope holes to hold him where I wanted him. After getting the ropes cut off under the seat and adding some green stuff to clean them up, I could then finally paint the ropes and seat to bring everything together. Right, now before we get too committed to kind of finalizing up those parts, I do want to switch speeds now and just do a little bit of work on the Marine for a second. So in an effort to not make this video too long, let's go and work on that Marine. But before we do, Please remember, give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Maybe click subscribe on the channel if you want to see more like it. Those things really, really do help out the channel. And if you want to join our Discord, then check the link below to our Patreon and Ko-fi. If you go through Patreon at the moment, there's actually a seven day free trial run in. So you can check it out before you pay anything. Now then, to keep things suitably black Templars, I'm starting out with this awesome Stern Guard as my base. This guy is flashy enough, and he has a knob cloth, so he'll work well. Where the lion's share of the kit bashing comes in is in the arms, because I need to make our guy look like he's pushing a swing. To achieve this, I'm gonna take two relatively straight arms without their hands and use green stuff to position them so that they're nice and perpendicular to the torso. Once I've got them in place, I'll use these straight hands from Space Marine Devastators. And again, just a bit of green stuff to help position them properly. With all of that done, I think you can probably see now how our pose is going to work fantastically for making this happy little guy look like he's pushing our orc. But wait, happy little guy, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? See, I want our Space Marine to look like he's having fun because this is supposed to be a date. And well, Space Marine heads are a bit, um... Yeah. Now, surprisingly, it was actually this Corn Berserker head from the new kit which I found that most screamed to me like it was having a good time. So despite it being very hard to do on camera, I modified this to make a new head for our Templar. 
Once it was done, I rested my aching fingers a bit and then glued it into place to finish our marine. After getting my marine painted, I'm now finally in a position to get the majority of these bits into position. I've got a few other bits of debris I wanted to include here, so once I've figured out where my main bits are going, I can also add them into the equation. And from here, I just spent a little bit of time tying the elements together with the base. And to start pulling the last bits together, there's some preliminary airbrushing needed to create the light from my neon sign. This is just a bit of purple and then pink, sprayed in a very clear fixed direction to create the impression of a light source. And then I can install the neon sign and that will be the cherry on what, for me as a non-kit basher, was actually a pretty ambitious little cake. And as a non-kit basher, this little diorama project took me some pretty serious time to get finished, but you know, it was just so fun to take part in a little community challenge and to celebrate Valentine's Day in probably the nerdiest way possible. So what do you think of our unlikely lovers? Could you ever see an orc and a space marine just putting aside their differences and having a little fun on Hell's Reach? Hmm, probably not, but why don't you comment below with your favorite unlikely lovers in the 40k scenario, just an opportunity to ship some characters other than Gilliman and the Eldar woman. But I think that's probably me about done for this one, folks. So I really hope you enjoyed the project, the premise, and the outcome. Please do be sure to check out Max at Lizard of Doom's video, where he will be showcasing a bunch of the Valentine's Kit Bash challenges, and he'll be showing you his own as well. There's also gonna be a bunch of other YouTubers taking part in this, so get on the train, check them all out. Let us know what you think. We, you know, kind of live for feedback, so we'd appreciate it. But with all that said, I think I'm probably going to get out of here now. So thank you so much for watching, folks. See you in the next one. Bye for now.